Hello, marine biology students. In this video, we're going to talk about the diversity of mollusks. So, phylum mollusca. is an important group of marine animals. They have great diversity within this phylum, including a variety of different body plants. But the general design is that there would be a head, a muscular foot, and a visceral mass of internal organs, including the digestive compartment. For mollusks, their body is usually covered by a mantle. which secretes a shell of calcium carbonate in many species. They have a specialized feeding appendage known as a radula. That is often used for grazing on algae, but we'll see has been modified in many species as well, allowing them to be predators. They have a well-developed nervous system with a brain and an open circulatory system meaning that their blood vessels are not always continuous and that the circulating fluid of the body can just empty into that major body cavity. They have a complete digestive system, so a mouth that's distinct from an anus and a digestive tube in which food is processed. And they are a large successful group with nearly 100,000 known species, but many remaining to be discovered. We're going to talk about several classes of mollusks the first being the gastropods, or class gastropoda. This is the largest group of mollusks. And it includes snails and limpets, abalones, and sea slugs. Gastropoda. The name itself means stomach foot because their visceral mass and body cavity is, is curled and coiled and above and through the muscular foot itself. Most species of gastropods have a coiled shell, although some, such as sea slugs, would not, and others, like the limpets and the abalones, have a smooth shell, even though the internal mass is coiled. One of these groups of sea slugs are known as nudibranchs, and they don't have any shell at all. These gastropods use their radula for grazing on seaweeds, yet some gastropods are deposit feeders and others are suspension feeders. Some are carnivores and use radula to capture their prey. Here we see a diversity of these gastropods, including a keyhole limpet, an abalone, a cone snail, nudibranchs, and then other forms of parasitic snails as well. Our next class in Phylum Mollusca are the bivalves, class bivalvia. And the name bivalve itself literally means two shells or two valves. Bivalves are specialized filter feeders. Including clams, oysters, scallops, mussels, and shipworms. These two protective shells compress the body into the mantle cavity. They have gills which are folded within the mantle cavity for respiration and filter feeding. Most bivalves use a two-siphon system where water enters and exits the mantle cavity through these siphons. Since bivalves are not grazers, they do not use a radula. Different bivalves have different habitats, with some clams burrowing within soft sediments, oysters and mussels usually living on hard surfaces or substrates, and scallops are free living. Here we see a diagram of a clam showing the basic body structures of a bivalve. Notice how the gill functions both in respiration and feeding. The next class of mollusks that we'll talk about are the cephalopods, or head feet.
The cephalopods include squids, octopus, cuttlefishes, and chambered nautilus. Their name literally means head-footed. They are fast-swimming predators, which can use water jet propulsion as a part of their locomotion. Water enters and exits the mantle cavity by way of a siphon. Cephalopods have a well-developed nervous system. With large complex eyes, brain, and nerves. The thick mantle covering their body usually does not secrete a shell, but in some species there will be an internal shell, and in others the shell will be completely absent. Their radula have been modified into a beak-like mouth to crush or rip prey. Here we see the diagram of a basic anatomy of an octopus, again with its siphon and its arms. The visceral cavity is mostly in what we would consider to be the head of the cephalopod. The body plan of a squid is a little different. Its arms and tentacles are entirely at the front of its body, with its mantle covering the remainder. The last few groups of mollusks are a bit more obscure than the ones we've talked about so far. We'll talk about chitons next, which are in the class Polyplicophora. Chitons have a dorsal shell made of eight plates. They have a ventral muscular foot and in some ways look a lot like gastropods, but they have no coiling of their visceral mass. Many chitons graze on seaweeds and small invertebrates on rocky shores. There's another group of mollusks, like the chitons, but instead of having many shells, they have a single one. They are called monoplicophorans, from the class monoplicophora. They were mostly known from fossils and thought extinct until surviving species were relatively recently rediscovered. They have a single shell but are not gastropods because they do not have a coiled visceral mass. The last group of mollusks we'll talk about are the tusk shells, or the scaphopods. And they have open-ended, tusk-shaped shells. They primarily live in soft sediment where they feed on materials within the sediments. This takes us to the end of our discussion on mollusks. Now, before our next video, I would like you to think about what makes land bugs different than ocean bugs. We'll talk about that. See you then.